If you grew up during the Great Depression, you may not have had enough food, and that may make you cautious of wasting food. Your family may not have had enough money, and so that could color your view of resources or how you want to spend your money. You may have very different views or behaviors compared to individuals who grew up in a time of relative abundance where such choices were not as critical. These kinds of behaviors or perspectives common to a particular population is called a cohort effect. It's when people who have been born in a certain period of time and gone through a certain set of experiences will tend to share a relatively similar outlook. This is the third key gerontology principle. And it is important when, for example, you pose a question to people of two different generations, two different cohorts, such as, how do you think you should spend your money? The older people say, I don't like to spend my money. And the younger people say, I do like to spend my money. People will say, that's because older people don't like to spend their money. But that's not true. It's a cohort effect. It has to do with what that generation experienced, not their age. You cannot attribute things to aging if you just pick different age groups and give them the same task. The best way to answer questions about changes in people over time with age is to do a longitudinal study. It asks the same people questions over time measures changes in physiology or behavior over many years of time. This helps show what is and is not affected by aging and what phenomena may be due to cohort effects.